Hi everyone and welcome back for another episode in one of my many UE4 tutorial videos. In this episode we're going to tackle the idea of Polymorph. So Polymorph is a spell used in quite a few games but most notably in World of Warcraft where the player can turn another character in the world into another character or another entity. So for example turning uh, an enemy into a sheep for example. Um, so I'm going to go around and show you how to accomplish such an effect in Unreal Engine 4. So here I have a um, the player character in the third person blueprint and here I have an enemy uh, which doesn't do anything. Okay, It's just an enemy character with a mesh associated to it which I can show you here. Okay, Very simple bog standard mesh with animation. Okay, So let's get this started with the spell casting part. Um, so I'm going to go into my third person character and I'm going to put it over here let's go for the E key now obviously you could have any key you like or any kind of control you like um, but this event is going to use the E key to trigger it and from there what we're going to do is cast a capsule trace out to see if it collides with um, any uh, valid targets so let's drag this out and go capsule trace by channel and we'll change some settings on this so the start location will be the location start of this um, player character. So drag your capsule component out, which is the root of your character. And we get the world location, world location of your character. And that going to the start. That was pretty simple. The end result though, we're going to take from our camera boom and we get the rotation of it. So this gets us which way we're facing. Get world rotation. And then from world rotation, you want to get the forward vector. So the rotation world rotation is going to return an angle. And the forward vector is going to return a direction of like a, a, a normalized zero to one direction. Because it's zero to one, we need to extend the length of it. So we're going to multiply it by a float. And a die 1000. And that means the imagine the little lines coming out at a certain direction, this would be a thousand units long. Okay. And then we need to add that to the location of our player character. So from the return value of the get world location, we're going to add it to our new multiplied value here. Let's just bring this along like so and plug it into the end. So that's going to set up the start and end location. The radius and half height though indicate the size of the capsule. A capsule being this pill shaped shape uh, field here. So I want to make mine exactly the same height and width as my player character one. So if I click on capsule component, I can see here on the capsule half height I've got 96 and the capsule radius I've got 42. So I'm just going to put those values in here like so. And the last thing we're going to do here is, actually second to last thing we're going to do here, is change the trace channel from visibility to camera. And and the last thing we're going to do is change the draw debug type to for one frame, like so. Okay. And click compile. So now, if I go into my game and push play, uh, oh, sorry, I can't do it for one frame, let's change it. Let's change that so it's not one frame. So Troy debug type will change that to um, for duration. Compile it. Hey, and there you go. So you've got a capsule trace goes out to here. It hit him, and the green indicates the end point. Gone past. Okay, when it goes green, it means it's de detected a hit. Okay, so we've hit the enemy. We now need to do something to the enemy and transform it. So let's go ahead and do the transform code on that enemy. So on the enemy, uh, we want to make a new function called polymorph. And the polymorph we're going to do, uh, we're going to basically just change the mesh. Okay. So Let's actually make another mesh for us to change it into. So I'm going to go into my mannequin here. 
find my mannequin mesh. I'm just going to duplicate it. And I'm just going to change the material on it so we know that we've got something different. I'm going to put a nice gold on him. Where is it? It's all gold. There you go. So when I polymorph, I want to change the mesh of my enemy character here to that mesh. So drag your mesh component out. That gets the component. And in here we can set the skeletal mesh that is used by that component. And we can just click on here and choose the mannequin. Click compile. And go back to our main player character. And back on your capsule trace by channel, when we get hit, we're going to get loads of data back, and that comes through this out hit. If you right click on the out hit and go split, you can see all the data that we retrieve. Now, one of these is a blue one, and it says out hit hit actor. And this is the actor that has been hit by the capsule trace. So we're going to drag this out, and we're going to cast that to the enemy. And as enemy, we are going to call that polymorph function. Click compile. And let's test it out. And there you go. It turns gold. So what's happened there is actually changed the mesh and changed the material along with the mesh. Okay. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, we're going to go a little bit further and just put a particle effect on it as well. So back on my enemy character, set scale to mesh. We can also spawn an emitter at location. And we're going to do an explosion. The location we're going to get is to set, uh, sorry, get actor location. And that will get the location of this current actor where it says self. That's itself. Click compile. So now boom transformed okay now if i keep hitting the spell the explosions will have carry on the mesh is still changing it's just obviously it's changing from the same thing to uh, the same thing so you're not going to notice any changes so let's make it so we can't transform it if it's already transformed so what we're going to do on here on the polymorph we're going to check if we have actually been polymorphed so at the end of our spawn emitter at location, we're going to create a new variable. And actually not a local variable, normal variable. And it's called is polymorphed. And I'm going to drag this out and choose set. And tick it to make it true. So when we polymorph him, it's going to change the mesh, spawn an explosion and then set this boolean to true. So now when I next time I go to click polymorph function again, I want to check the is polymorphed uh, boolean. So drag it out like, like I just did and that will go into a branch. And if it's false, we can go to set skeletal mesh like so. So your finished blueprint should look as follows. We have the po is polymorphed going into the branch. If it's false, i.e. we're not polymorphed yet, we're going to change the mesh, spawn in the emitter, and then change the boolean to true. So if I were to polymorph them again, this would be return true and do nothing. Okay, click compile, and let's push play. Polymorphed, and I can't polymorph him again. Now, after that, I'm going to also make my enemy on a timer return back to normal. So let's um, go to an event graph. Actually, no, let's go to a function, another function. Uh, return to normal. And on this function here, we're going to set the mesh back to where it was. So exactly the same as before. So set skeletal skeletal mesh and we're going to change the mesh back to the first mannequin mesh 
and I'm going to also turn is polymorphed to be false so it resets it now how this function is called uh, will be done in the event graph so I go to the event graph tab up here uh, so not an event graph on the polymorph here so once we've done the polymorphing and set the boolean I'm also going to set a timer by function name and it's going to be self as the object the function name here is going to be return to normal and it has to be spelled exactly the same capitals and everything and we'll put a timer in here for how long it's going to take for that function to trigger I'm going to do five seconds so after five seconds he'll return back to normal click play and push and count to five seconds return back to normal and I should be able to pull him off him again there you go now the beauty of this system that really is is because the enemy has this boolean on them we can use it in say an AI tree and when we do an AI we can make the AI do different things based on what they're transformed into so if you were to transform him into a sheep model um, you would just have uh, in the in the behavior tree a branch saying is polymorph true false and then if it is true react differently on a different behavior tree so for example do, do, do when you do polymorph here you can set a new behavior tree on the AI controller so you can just do uh, get AI controller and then here you can go uh, run behavior tree and choose a different behavior tree based on what you transformed him into so if you I haven't got any but if you had like a little sheep uh, behavior tree rather than a person behavior tree you can just do this here likewise if you want to turn from a uh, friendly to an enemy you can change based on different behavior trees so you have a friendly behavior tree and an enemy behavior tree if you want to learn a lot more about AI head over to my AI tutorial series where I go through how to make AI work um, head over there and you can use that with this to create some interesting polymorphed behaviors in any case thank you very much for watching um, hopefully you enjoyed it and you learned something about all of this and uh, thank you very much for everyone supporting me over on patreon so if you like this video and want to see more videos um, exclusive just to patreons go over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley and support me just like these people have done big thank you to everyone uh, couldn't be doing it without you thanks very much and I'll see you guys next time bye bye